Welcome, my name is Steve Martin. Steve Martin. I am a wild and crazy. <laughs> Steve said in the beginning, he's like, I don't know if I can ever watch this. <laughs> uh, so I said, well, maybe I could show it to a director who we both know just to kind of, if you want to hear an opinion, a second opinion. And he said, the problem with that is they're going to have an opinion. The only opinion I care about is yours, which I thought was really great. And so I remember when I was finishing the cut, I said, okay, Steve, I'm going to send you a link. And he said, okay, but I'm probably not going to watch it. And I send it at noon at three o'clock. I get an email from Steve, one line, loved it. And then 10 minutes later, I get another email, one line, can I show it to my shrink? <laughs> Uh, and I thought that was like the best review. Hey, Morgan, I'm Daniel. Hey, guys. And I'm Shabazz. Shabazz. Good to meet you. That's that's Matt Damon behind us. Yeah, as Matt well. Damon and the cast of Ocean's Eleven is also. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she will have gold. You're nice. <laughs> Morgan, how's your day going? Good, good. Still early out here. So, well, earlier yeah. than you. Where are you? And uh, <laughs> we're on Georgia. Our... Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. So, it's honestly, we're just so grateful for you sharing your time with us. You know, we. Are such a huge fan of all of your film and we're, we're thinking like roadrunner and we're top thinking like won't you be my neighbor you've done so many incredible films uh yeah. that really dug deep into you know these people that we love and i think with steve it's no different so uh, i think first question out of the gate is why steve martin i feel like when when i hear an idea for a film and i without hesitation say yes then those are the best films um, so, you know, I grew up a huge Steve Martin fan, <clears throat> you know, memorized the records, watched all the movies, and I've always paid attention to him. Like I've seen, read his books and, um, and I even remember thinking after I read his memoir, Born Standing Up, God, it, I would love to make a Steve Martin documentary. And I've always wanted to make a comedy documentary too. And somebody said that Steve might be willing to make a documentary. And I just said this, I've been waiting for this for decades. Um, and so I went and met with Steve and he was, it was, we didn't even talk about the documentary much. We just talked about kids and art and other stuff. You know, we just, just getting to know each other because you you know i think for him it's a bigger decision of can i trust this person you know do i like this person you know you're going to go on this journey with this person um and we just we kind of clicked and so then i just started going to steve's house with the tape recorder and just talking to him so i did that for hours and hours and hours before we started shooting just to kind of figure out how he saw his own story and how he told stories and and to build our relationship and uh, I have to say that is often the most fun part of making a documentary is just being able to sit in a room and just ask him any question whatsoever. It's like- Not a bad day at work. Definitely no, not. it's great. It's great. <laughs> Actually, my old, the only day that was more fun on this was the day sitting around watching Steve and Marty short <laughs> through jokes. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's like a once in a lifetime kind of experience right yeah. there. It was amazing. Yeah, I mean, those guys together, it's so it's so interesting. I mean, Jerry Seinfeld says in the film, like comedians don't go from a single act to a double act. Like that does not happen. But I feel like that's a part of Steve's whole story, which is like the whole first part of his life, the whole first film, he is a solitary man on a single journey to figure out comedy. You know, for 35 years, that's all he's focused on. And then once the jerk happens and he walks away from comedy. It's like his life goes like this. And the Steve I met had people in it, you know, all, and not just Marty, but a wife and a kid and a cartoonist partner in a band and all these other people he works with and collaborates with. Um, and I just kept trying to figure out who, how did he become this guy from the guy he was back then? And that's really why I ended up kind of splitting this into two different films is that I felt like there were two different stories and I didn't want to, and they felt different, tonally different. It's not just half of one story and another, like, let me let each one become its own film. 
Absolutely. What we loved so much about you know the two parts is that they on their own are as fantastic as each other. So you can just literally watch one and be like, yeah, I, I've gotten this information and watch the other one and be like, now I'm getting even more. So we love that there was a separation between them, but they still felt like they shared the same DNA. That's great. I mean, it was it's great to hear that. I mean, it was I wanted to make sure you could watch one. And it would feel like a meal and you wouldn't necessarily feel like, oh, God, I wish, you know, I wish they had done this or that. Like I wanted to feel satisfying. And I even had people watch them in reverse order to see if that works. And it works, you know, maybe not quite as well, but but it was an interesting challenge for myself. And even when I made the films, I had two different teams working on them who weren't allowed to watch the other films. So oh, wow, wow. two different editors editing separately and composers and graphics and all that were all separate between the two. And then finally, when both films were pretty far along, I let the editors <laughs> watch the other. <laughs> that's really unique though. And yeah. I think that's, that's what's so fascinating about, you know, Steve and like in two pieces, right? Like you, you're getting um, really like his come up and, why it was so different. And, you know, for myself, like the Steve Martin that I always think about is like, you know, the father of the bride, Steve Martin, the planes, trains, and automobiles, Steve Martin, like that's who he forever is in my head. So getting to see literally like the other side of that coin um, was a really interesting deep dive because he's always just like America's dad to me. Yeah. You know, he's always like that fatherly figure. It is, you know, and it's, what's interesting is that at the time he was playing a lot of those roles, he hadn't yet figured out a lot of stuff in his own life. He was single or divorced and no kids. And and he says in the beginning of the second film, you know, I feel like I live my life backwards, you know, but that was surprising to me of, you know, that, that he kind of became the character he was playing in a way. He says that yeah. he father. You know, it's like having movie kids made me want to have my own kid. It's like that he and he says, you know, I would have been a would have been a terrible father if I had had a kid when I was 32 or something. You know, he just he wasn't ready for it. So he had to do all this work to be ready to be the guy. And now Steve kind of is the father of the bride character. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I mean, he, he, we discover so many great revelations about him as a person. So when you finally had that opportunity to show Steve, how did that go? So Steve said in the beginning, he's like, I don't know if I can ever watch this. <laughs> uh, and he said a couple things that were really, so I said, well, maybe I could show it to a director who we both know just to kind of if you want to hear an opinion, a second opinion. And he said, the problem with that is they're going to have an opinion. The only opinion I care about is yours, which I thought was really great. Uh, and so I remember when I was finishing the cut, I said, okay, Steve, I'm going to send you a link on Friday or Saturday. And he said, okay, but I'm probably not going to watch it. And so I wake up Saturday morning, there's an email from him saying, I didn't get the link. And I wrote back, and said, okay, I'm sending it at noon. He said, okay, but I'm probably not going to watch it. And I send it at noon at three o'clock. I get an email from Steve, one line, loved it. And then 10 minutes later, I get another email, one line. Can I show it to my shrink? <laughs> uh, and I thought that was like the best review. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, what more can you, what better review can you get than that? Yeah. I think, see, yeah. I told you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. You know, Morgan, we, we could talk to you all day. You, this is this has been amazing. But uh, I, I'm I'm so curious when, when you're putting together a doc like this and you're spanning so much time, um, especially someone like Steve Martin. Where are you going to first to find all of this archival footage? Where are you piecing this together and really putting this all like in the pots to make something? How are you How are you finding all of this? Yeah, I mean, everywhere, you know. So everywhere in every archive I can find, but also. Um, Steve's basement, you know, <laughs> I had, you know, my co-producer and an intern, um, spent months in Steve's basement, scanning thousands of, of documents and, um, and finding videotapes. And then there were other things that we tracked down from his old manager's estate. You know, there, there's one performance, some of that early stand up color performance 
which is from a show he did at the boarding house in San Francisco in 1974 that was filmed for a thing that was never released. And they had both nights multi-cam footage of Steve in 1974 performing. And wow. nobody's ever seen that. You know, I mean, there are a lot of the footage in there, a lot of it nobody's ever seen, which is great, you know. And then that black and white footage of Steve, like filming himself doing his stand-up uh, with like long hair, black and white. Um, like he had bought a, one of those first Sony cameras and he was filming himself and doing things. And it took us a year to find that footage. It was, um, you know, somebody had a copy in a storage space somewhere, maybe, you know, it was one of those things. Um, but with an archival film, you kind of live or die by the material you get. And I didn't even, I wasn't even sure we would have enough to make the first film as a purely archival film for a long time. But once we got there, I was like, okay, I think we can actually do this. I think we have enough material to actually be able to, to tell it archivally. Um, so, and that was in challenge. I've never actually done a film like that, 100% archival film. Um, so that was great. It's, that, it's amazing. It's beautiful. We we absolutely adored it. Definitely. Yes. Morgan, we, we hope we get the opportunity to talk to you again. We already know that you have some amazing stuff coming out in the future. And we're, again, like I said, hope to talk to you about that. But thank you so much for spending your time with us today. We absolutely loved Steve Doc. And we, uh, yeah, hope to see you soon. Great talking to you guys. Thanks so much.